morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Always feels good to be in God's house, does it not? Amen. To walk in them doors and feel that Holy Spirit just to working and, and running through your veins. Um, thankful today for such a beautiful day that we could all come together into fellowship and to love, um, most importantly, to learn the Holy Word of God. And uh, I know my wife did a Sunday school lesson, a uh, really good one this morning on Thanksgiving. My sermon last week was about Thanksgiving. And today is going to be, again, about Thanksgiving. Um, I generally do not fashion my sermons around holidays, uh, but I was led by the Holy Spirit to do this. And we take a lot of things for granted. Um, and we get it's too easy to get complacent, you know, and not, not do anything. But we take a lot of things for granted. And, you know, the church... The roof over our heads, this place, this awesome place that God has given us, provided for us um, to be able to come and praise and worship and learn the Holy Word of God. Um, we, we sometimes take that for granted. Uh, we take for granted that the, you got to sleep under a roof in a warm place last night. We take for granted that the food that He sets upon our table each and every day. And there's people out in the world today that don't have all that. We take for granted the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on that cross. I mean, we wouldn't even be taking our first breath in the mornings or anything else that hadn't been for that. We'd all end up in hell, would we not? Amen. God created us in His image. He created us with a plan and a purpose. He created us for His pleasure. And we take a lot of what He does for us for granted. Um, one of the greatest examples, which I used it last week and I'm going to use it again, you know, here we are coming up on the holidays and Christmas and you've got somebody that is special in your life and you're going to make sure to go out and you're going to just imagine now this person, you're going out and you're trying to find that perfect gift. You're looking online. You're doing price checks. You're doing this and that and the other because you want to do the perfect gift for that person that you care so much about. And then they, you end up finding it and then when you give it to them, they just take it and walk away. and Don't say thank you. They don't, they don't even act like they're happy that you did it. What is the gift that God gave us, the greatest gift that God ever gave us was Jesus Christ. How many people deny Him today? How many people say He doesn't exist today? How many people do you witness to today that will turn and walk away from the greatest gift that has ever been bestowed upon us? Um, we take that, as, even as Christians, sometimes we take for granted all that He did and all the sacrifice that He made in order to bring us salvation and to live eternally in the kingdom of God. Amen. And we have got to be thankful to God for all that we have and all that we do and all that He has done for you. You've got to be thankful. You don't just be thankful in the big things. You've got to be thankful in the small things. Uh, I was blessed to get a new truck. Never owned a new vehicle in my life. Got a new truck. And I'll tell you what, Satan has placed a bullseye on that truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I have almost wrecked. I'm just telling you about thinking the small things. And there's times that I have backed up and all of a sudden I see a telephone pole that I didn't see before I backed up. Amen. I said, thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord, because I would have hit it. But that has happened to me I don't know how many times since I've been in that truck. Now I'm just nervous. You know, but each and every time that God has blessed me and, and he's, he's guided me, whatever. You might think that's stupid, but I'm at my trust. Right. And, and he blessed me with it. I don't want to wreck it. Right. Um, you know, Uncle Doug got, about had his eye poked out one day. There's times when I'm on a job site or whatever and I get up and I could have hit my head or something poked me in the eye. And I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. There's sometimes he'll bless you with something that's so simple and minute to other people that is an inconvenience to me and He takes care of it and I say thank you Lord right. because I know that it is Him that is doing it because if not I'd be hurt and wrecked. Thank God. We've got to learn to thank God for everything. And uh, I guess the example that's really set forth in this scripture today is us taking for granted being in a place that you can learn the Word of God. Amen. It's way too easy. I don't know how many churches you've been in. 
I've been in churches all over the United States. And I've been in churches ever since I was a kid, off and on, all my life. So I've seen each and every kind of minister there is to be, to seen or heard. And I've never, ever been in a place like this. Can I get an amen? amen? I'm not saying that because it's our church. I'm saying it because God gave us this place. And we ought to be thankful to Him for that. Because it is a rare thing for you to go into a church today and be taught the Word of God. Yes, sir. I am thankful that God has blessed me with the knowledge of the Word. I am thankful that He took a sinner like me and He's using me to bring forth His Holy Word. And you ought to be thankful that God cared enough about you to bring you here. There are people coming from all over the United States to visit Old Union Community Church. And it ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about God. Amen. And it's about what is this place is special today. Yes, sir. Two weekends ago, I had a man come all the way from Massachusetts. And his girlfriend was from New York. And they came here to be baptized. Yes. All praise and glory to God. This place is special. It really is. And we have got to be thankful to God that you can be educated in the Word today. Most people are being taught today all you have to do is believe. Believing is not going to keep you from the deception. We've got to do more than believe. What did God or Christ say in Revelations? I know thy works. You can't take anything with you when you pass from this life, but your works are waiting for you in heaven because they are in the books, folks. Yes, sir. In the book of life. Alright, so let's get into it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting with verse 1. And this is Paul teaching. Therefore, Seeing we have this ministry, I say to you, seeing that we have this ministry. This ain't my ministry. This ain't your ministry. This is God's ministry that is in this church today. Amen. It says, but therefore seeing that we have this ministry and we are not received and we have received mercy, we faint not. We don't give up. We don't quit. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit of God that is in us, that is within us, that gives us strength each and every day and each and every time that you're going through a trial or tribulation, we have that strength from God. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing for a due season we shall reap if we faint not, as Christians, as true believers, people that want to be in the Word of God and receive the strength from this Holy Word today, you don't quit. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to trip. You're going to fall. But guess what? If you love the Lord and you have the Holy Spirit within you and you are in the Word of God and you are praying each and every day, what are you going to do? You're going to get back up. Yes, sir. Satan might knock you down, but how many? it ain't important how many times you get knocked down, but how many times you get back up. And it is through the strength and the power of the Holy Word of God that allows us to do that. Thank you. That was Satan. <laughs> i to get rid of my piece of paper. Time is short in this life. Do you know what God's overall plan for us is? For as many of His children as He can possibly save and bring into salvation. That is what God wants for His children. Not willing that any would perish. James 4, 14. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a short time and then vanisheth away. You hear me pray most of the time when I pray is I thank God. One of the first things I thank God for is the first breath that I took. I might be, I might take my last breath, God forbid, before I walk out of this church today. We are not guaranteed another day in this life. But while we are in this life, God has a plan and a purpose for you. I look at this church and I see all the talent 
that we have got the God-given talent to make this ministry work. And that's why I said it's our ministry. Yes, sir. It's not mine. It's not Randall's. It's not Doug. It's not Becky's. It is God's ministry. And He has blessed us with an awesome uh, praise and worship team. He's praised us with people that cook and people that clean. He's praised us with or giving gifts to people to go out and minister to the other people in the world that need help. It all works together in the body of Christ. If you noticed how fast time's going by, you know, I do realize that the older you get, the more you realize how fast it's going by. Because we know we're coming towards or close to then to meeting Jesus face to face. But... Time's flying. Yes, sir. And we need to be thanking God. Yes. We need to be thanking God for each and every day that He blesses us with. Amen. Verse 2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the Word of God, the Word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Hidden here means cunning things. I mean, we are not uh, out to rip people off. We're not out here deceitfully trying to raise money uh, for the church. We are using the Word of God that we have been taught by our Father, and we are spreading that Word. We are, we are using the Word of God for our strength. We're using the Word of God for our direction. He's saying we taught the Word as it is written. And we didn't make it easy. Now what do I mean by that? I might get up here and preach something and you leave this place today plumb offended. We don't make it easy. We teach the Word of God. And if the Word of God offends you, then you have a problem with God. That you, it's called correction, is it not? Yes, sir. Do we not correct our children when they need to be disciplined? Or we should? Yes, we do. Amen. Why? Because we love them. And God loves us. And with that love comes correction through the Holy Word of God. I'm not up here to tickle your ears. Amen. I'm not up here to say all you have to do is believe. No. <laughs> you are going to have trials and tribulations and Christ told us that we would. Yes. Yes. There's a lot more to this journey than just believing. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And Levi said something about this morning and I just love that. Plant the seed. Gave somebody just a scripture to look up for themselves. And they're getting baptized today. Amen. Isaiah 55, 11, So shall the word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. You are never, ever wasting your time to try to witness to somebody. Amen. Never. You're not wasting your time. God created the seed and He wants you to plant it. Once you plant it, He'll cultivate it. After He cultivates it, He's going to water it with the dews from heaven and the rain. Yes. He will see that that seed planted will do something to the glory of the kingdom of God. Yes. We're doing a poor job of getting out witnessing the people. Yes. Now, if that's not you, you don't have to be offended by it. I'm even now doing a poor job about witnessing the people. I ain't, you know, and we got to do it. Yes, sir. If we don't do it, who is going to? Preach, yes. I love it when you're out in public. Like I said, it just makes the biggest difference just being nice. Yes. We live in a bad world that's very evil today. And just being kind, yes. smiling, shaking somebody's hand, making them feel important, that is also planting a seed. Amen. As people wonder why you are always so happy. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy because I know that God's with me no matter what I'm going through. No matter what I'm going through, God is with me. Yes. And He's with you too. Amen. We spend way too much time worrying and the Satan loves to use our worry against us. And at the end of it all, what happens? God, t God steps in, He takes care of it, and you go, you did all that worrying for nothing. Do you have faith in God? Do you believe that He's with you? Do you believe He's for you? He's with me. He's with you each and every time we go through a tribulation Amen. in this life. If you truly believe that. Yes, sir. Verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them 
that are lost. Romans 11, 8, According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear. You may plant that seed, but they're not always going to listen. They may reject it, they may turn away from it, but you still don't know what the seed is going to do. It might not be for the person you gave the seed to. They might say something to somebody else and say, hey, this pastor over there at Union Community Church invited me to church and was talking to me about God. I don't want nothing to do with that. And the person they were talking to was like, wow, you know, I, I'm missing something in my life. I, I think I'd like to hear about that. It never returns unto God void. Some people are blind to the truth and it is because they don't want to know the truth. If you know the truth, then you've got to be accountable to God. That's why they don't want to know the truth. They'd rather just believe. There's so much more to this journey than just believing. <clears throat> A big part of it is God's Word. Hid here means veiled to anyone that does not have eyes to see and ears to hear. Now you see me come up here before each and every sermon and I kneel down to this altar and I pray to God. You know what I pray to Him for? For you to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Open hearts and open minds. I pray that God anoints you when you walk through that door and I pray to God that He anointed you before I started preaching. Because He has a message for you today. Whatever that message is. <clears throat> and we should be giving thanks to the Father that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Now I know it's been a good while since we've done Bible study and that's when we do most of our deepest stuff. But there's a lot of people in here that have been through those studies and you know the truth. The deeper mysteries of God's Word, folks. And, and when you've got them eyes to see, you are to thank God yes. for knowing that truth. Amen. And that God entrusted you with that truth. I mean, it just blows my mind the things that I know. And I give God all the praise and the glory. And I thank Him for that truth. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine through them. You notice that was a lowercase g. The God of this world is Satan. And He's blinding those people that are not saved, that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But I would be lying if I didn't say that there are also Christians that are blinded to the truth. Yes. And millions of them will be deceived at the end of this generation when Christ returns. But Satan will do everything he can to knock you off of your path. Do you have the strength to withstand it? Because just believing ain't going to cut it. Do you have the strength to withstand everything that He throws at you today? You only draw that strength through the Holy Word of God. Luke 14, 23, The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Now, we're not talking about just a church house. We're talking about the body of Christ. We're talking about the kingdom of God. We're talking about the mansion in heaven. We've got to get out there and do a better job of witnessing the people that are lost in this world. Verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord. Paul's saying, I'm not preaching Paul. I'm not preaching Silas. I'm preaching Jesus Christ. That is what this ministry is built on. The Jesus Christ, the living word, the rock, the living water, the bread of life. That's what it's built on. And ourselves, your servants for Jesus, uh, for Jesus' sake. Alright, verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God and the face of Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 5, God is the light and there is no darkness in Him. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. Satan is the prince of darkness. The light of his knowledge, he paid the price and Christ dispelled that darkness. 
And when he hung on that cross and he gave up the ghost, he defeated Satan at Calvary for me and you. He defeated death for me and you. You don't ever have to face death. It is a transition from the flesh body to the spiritual body and to being in the presence of Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Are you thankful to Him today? That word darkness also can mean ignorance and biblical illiteracy. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The spirit of our flesh in the, our flesh bodies. When Jesus Christ ascended back into heaven, He sent back that Holy Spirit of God that dwells within me and you. And through that Holy Spirit, we can reach those that are lost today and let the light of God shine through you. He gives us the ability to teach he gives us the ability to play music. He gives you the ability to be outgoing and charismatic. Whatever it takes, He wants to save all of His children. Verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Some days it seems like everything you touch goes wrong. And boy, do you got to stop and think that Satan's all up in that. Oh, yes. Everything you touch goes wrong, but we still have to thank God. Yes. Why? Because He's got that Holy Spirit within you. He gives you the strength to get past it. Are you going to fall to pieces? Or are you going to stand strong and stand on the Word of God? We are believers. I know I preach a lot about talking about the Word of God. And what all has it done for myself and what it can do for God's children if they're being taught it, what it can do for you if you are in the Word of God. And I made a list. And I really didn't have enough paper to make all the things that I'm benefiting from knowing and being in a place where God's Word is being taught. How to raise a child. How to be a better husband. How to be a better wife. How to be a better grandparent, a better employer, a better employee. How to run a successful business. Do you know how to collect God's promises? Because they're in the Word of God. I know how to be blessed. How about you? He tells you how to do it in the Word. It's always, it allows me to teach God's Word with understanding. I have a lot of people say, Brother Jimmy, I just love it because you break down them verses and I completely understand it. I said, praise God. All praise and glory to God that He gave me that gift and has bestowed it upon me. Thank you, Lord. What an honor. It has shown me how to be a good pastor, how to be a good friend, how to edify others, strengthens me in my trials and my tribulations, how to discern the evil spirits, how to cast the evil spirits out, what foods to eat to make you healthier while you are on this journey on this earth? How to study and discern God's Word. How to overcome addictions. How to love. How to mourn. How to accept the death of the loved ones. Man, I, would, man, I tell you what, that will destroy a person if they don't know it, not educated in the Word and they have somebody to pass away and some minister that don't know what he's talking about says they're going to hell. No. Uh -uh. Yes. Mm -mm. You have today. Amen. How to obtain salvation? Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. How to help others come to salvation? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank How to be compassionate yes. and show mercy? How to forgive people? Boy, I tell you one thing he taught me through this word was how to harness my anger. Yes, <laughs> Used to have a bad temper. But God showed me through the Word how to harness my temper. How to recognize the enemy. How to recognize the Antichrist when he comes to this earth. Do you know how to recognize the Antichrist? How to recognize the true Christ. Come, sweet Jesus, come. How to take part in the first resurrection. 
How to see prophecy as it is coming to pass each and every day before your eyes. How to plant and grow food. Was it not God that created the soil? Did He not place Adam in the garden to till the ground? Is it not God that created the seed? And then when you put the seed, He created the soil. And does God not have the dew of heavens to water that? And the rain to fall on so that you've got harvest? So do you think it's any accident that you've got a warm meal in front of you each and every day? We're supposed to thank God. Now I could have made that list a lot longer. And I'm sure that you can think of all kinds of ways that God's Word helps you and has helped you in your life. <clears throat> Alright, what verse did I leave off on? Uh, eight. Okay. Alright, so we did eight. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed and perplexed, but not in despair. Alright, verse nine. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Again, if you get knocked down, you got two choices. You can lay there and you can cry and you can feel sorry for yourself. Or you can get your donkey back up and move forward. Are you going to let Satan win? Are you going to lay down and be a why, why me baby? Or are you going to be a true Christian of God that's educated in the Word and you got the Holy Spirit in you and you're going to get back up and say, go to H-E-L-L, Satan. Get behind me. Yes. I mean, Mike lost part of his leg. He could have gave up. He could have laid down. He could have felt sorry for himself. And look at him. He's got a bionic leg now. He already broke one. But he didn't quit. He didn't give up. We cannot, as Christians, give up. We have got to fight the good fight that God has placed upon us in this world. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And people say, well, you know, I don't know if I believe that or not. I'm going through a rough time. No, we leave God. God doesn't leave us. Amen. God's waiting on you to come back to your senses. That's right. Right. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Some people would rather lay there and cry. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You've got the Holy Spirit of God in you. You've got all the power that you need in this life. Amen. People want to whine and cry about their situation, whine and cry about this, and whine and cry about that, instead of thanking God for what they do have and complaining about what they don't have. That's not the only thing. 1 Corinthians 10 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as common to man. You're not special. Whatever you're going through, you are not special. Somebody else in the world has already gone through it. There's probably, no, not probably, there's an example in the Word of God yes, to tell you how they overcome that situation. Yes. And somebody might be going through the same thing that you're going through, but a hundred times worse. So your situation ain't special. Quit being a crybaby and get up yes, and do something about it. Yes, but God is faithful. Thank you, Lord. Yes who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. God knows what your breaking point is and He's not going to let it happen. He will step in if you love Him and you have faith in Him. But will also with the temptation make a way for you to escape that you may be able to bear it. What a promise from God. All you have to do is have faith. All you have to do is get back up and plow forward. And God, He will step in at your breaking point. Is that not our trials and tribulations that, that educate us, that give us more knowledge? Is it not? Give us more strength? God's preparing you. You may think, oh God, it's just so bad right now. God is preparing you each and every time you get stronger and stronger and stronger. And be thankful to God for that. He protects us. Verse 11. For we which live are all, always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal flesh. We all have troubles. Why? Satan! Amen. And if you love the Lord, and you are in prayer, you are in the Word, and you do come to church, oh, He wants you back. 
He don't want you serving God. He wants you serving Him. Right. Mortal means liable to die. Even us in the flesh, with Christ within us, we can defeat Satan today. Yes. What did Satan defeat? What did Christ defeat Satan with on the mount? The Word of God. He cannot stand up against the living Word, folks. We thank You, Father, for the Word. Amen. We thank You, Father, for this fantastic place that You've given us that we can learn the Word. We thank You, Father, for the love and the fellowship that we have for one another. We thank You for the opportunity to serve You, Father. You know what an honor it is to be to bestow the, for God to entrust a ministry to you? I mean, that's a big deal. All of us are part of the ministry. <clears throat> verse 12. No, first, yeah. yeah. Verse 12. So that death worketh in us, but life in you, the Holy Spirit of God. Romans 6.23, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? How hard is that? Call upon the name of the Lord. Hit your knees. Ask for forgiveness of sins. And accept and recognize that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. Amen. Oh, it's so, it's so tough to obtain, isn't it? All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is surrender. You're tired of living a bad life? You're tired of everything going wrong in your life? Then accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes, sir. Amen. Watch your life turn around instantly. Amen. Verse 13. We having the spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Paul was quite the scholar in the Hebrew. Yes. But the most fascinating thing for me about old Paul, you think you're bad, you think you've done things you can't be forgiven about, and you're letting Satan hold you down. You better be looking at Paul. Because Paul persecuted the church. Paul grabbed people by the head of the hair, drung them out into the streets, and he also killed people. And God called this man yes, as a witness for him and to teach the Word of God. This man wrote the majority of the New Testament. Now, you may not agree with him using Paul, and I'm sure back then they didn't want to receive it as well. But who is it or who are we to question God's decision of who He calls? Verse 14, Knowing that He which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and we shall present us with you. That's what we have to look forward to. The victory. We know how the book ends. Amen. Satan loses. We win. Paul also described in Hebrews chapter 12, he described our life as a race and a marathon. You're going to be running that race and sometimes you may trip and fall. You might get a leg cramp. You might get thirsty. You might be exhausted and stop. That's part of life. But you've got to continue to move forward and pace yourself. 